I'm Dr. Brad Rogers, East Carolina University, and what's happening here uh, behind me is the Summer Field School in Nautical Archaeology that we run every year uh, with the program of Maritime Studies. And what you're seeing is they're working on what's called the Corolla Wreck, which is a wreck that's washed up, um, I think, in November of last year and has been moved to this uh, area for its, its protection. It's been washing up and down the beach for some time. And we're taking a close look at this. This has been identified as a, as a very old wreck for this area. So we wanted to take a look and see exactly what we've got here. And it appears that it is, that this may be an early 17th century vessel. Um, in this hemisphere, we have only worked on one other vessel from this time period uh, in Bermuda. And um, so the students are getting as much data and information from this wreck as they possibly can. Uh, then I believe the wreck's going to be moved over to uh, the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum. Our program in Maritime Studies is a very hands-on program. Uh, we include lots of field work with this program and um, that, that makes us different from many of the other programs that, that do this. Actually, there's not many programs that do this, but um, very few in fact. But we pride ourselves in taking our students out into the field and showing them what they're going to be working on uh, in the real world and making sure that they have practical experience in recording shipwrecks. I'm Nathaniel Howe in the East Carolina University program, Maritime Studies. Uh, today we're examining uh, this wreck that came up on the beach here in the Outer Banks and uh, starting out by cleaning out the sand and last uh, bits of seashells and things so we can get a good look at it and see how it's put together and that'll give us a clue on when and where it was built uh, based on the different building traditions. Uh, so far we're thinking it, it might be an English vessel uh, from the 17th century but we will see. Yeah. Well we'll start by just looking over the vessel and getting a feel for it and getting an understanding of uh, some of the key features that we'll be dealing with. And we lay down a baseline tape that essentially all measurements are taken off of that central line, um, which will be rigged right down the center of the vessel soon. We're on a tape measure there. And we'll take measurements off of that and we'll essentially uh, dr draw a map of the entire vessel with as many details as we can record. Uh, and then we'll also be recording observations on patterns we see and trends in the way it's built, uh, things that are irregular from known building traditions of the time period uh, or things that are very consistent with known building traditions. Uh, archaeology is a very hands-on field and it's something that it's very very difficult to try to learn from a book. So these field schools are really precious for us as students to get a chance to approach a vessel like this one where we don't know much about it and start analyzing it and, uh, and go through the process of actually recording it, dealing with the problems in the field, the logistics. Um, there are a lot of dynamic elements to these kind of projects that we can really only learn by doing them, actually undertaking these projects in the field. Uh, this is just the first day of working in the field here. Uh, we'll be here for three weeks recording a series of different vessels down the Outer Banks. Um, about half of them will be submerged wrecks. We'll dive on if, if the weather lets up a little. And uh, the rest, we've got about half of them here on shore that we can work with. And these, of course, are much easier to work on because we can, uh, we're not limited by uh, how much uh, air we have in our tanks. Um, we don't have to worry about storm surge. So the, the onshore ones are definitely the easiest ones to work on. Uh, but underwater, you'll see some really impressive preservation of other materials.